Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast Podcast. I'm Andy Roth, alongside Phil Duvall. Say hi, Phil. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday, everybody. And you know what right? that means. Friday means another viewer mailbag. We're really excited about now, today's... It's not just it's... another mutant viewer mailbag. This is, this is going to be a colossal viewer mailbag. I'm going to go... I'm feeling... I'm going to call it. This is going to be a really good mailbag. If, if this were a movie... Like, it, it's so epic that, that you know, DeMille would be directing this mailbag. There would be an intermission in this. No, wait, but I don't want to say that because I don't want people to think it's really long. Right. It's not, not going to be really long, but right. it's going to, it's, but it's, you're going to feel something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Probably, probably regret, but yes. you're going to feel something. Maybe a little indigestion. A uh, lot of shame, a lot of shame, maybe some spite. <laughs> and much, much hatred for the two of us. Uh, uh, Phil, let's... I need to I need to take a second uh, hey. to apologize to you, to apologize to our viewers, and honestly to um, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. America, uh, I need to apologize to America. Uh, on Wednesday, we released our video about the best sports or the the sports that produce the best movies. Sure. And I said something, and it was a throwaway thing at the end of the podcast, and. I bet most people didn't even notice, judging by the judging by the fact that no one's commented about it on Facebook. Uh, no one has noticed it yet. Um, and I said something. We, were, we we segued very briefly into talking about television shows. Yeah. And I said, I can't think off the top of my head yeah. of a good football television show. Except for the second greatest foot television show of all time, Friday Night Lights. I. How did we do that? Because you yeah, said this it. This isn't on you. This is on it. me. This is on me. No, no. You, yeah, but you, but no, but I remember you saying it, and we were talking about fantasy football, and we were talking about this we about yeah, and we were talking about how boring it is to talk about football. I said then, it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you possibly why I forgot about it was because I brought that whole thing up. I moved into TV from fantasy football. So that I could specifically yeah. bring up the league. Bring up the league. Obviously. Which can is a very funny show. Uh, can and I, and I enjoy every minute of it. Can but, I say something in your defense? Please. Okay. We both agree that Friday Night Lights is a superlative show. I would call it the second best show of all time, which I also call Deadwood, but don't ever... There's a bunch of shows that are the second best. But it is, it is, a, it is so sublime, and you and I love it so much, that oh. that's easy, right? Okay. Yes. Here's the thing. So, so me and Culpa together, Nostra Culpa, Nostra Culpa. Uh, but, but here's the big thing, right? Like, um, if you're trying to sell Friday Night Lights to someone who's never seen it, you and can't you call it a football show. Not only can you not call it a football show, yeah, but you have to say to them, it's not about football. Right. That's so, fair. if it it and and it really isn't. I mean, it's about people who love football. Yes. And football yes. is often used to advance the plot. Yes. But it really isn't a football show. Well, it is a football show in the sense that if they were playing baseball, but it isn't. Nah, I mean, we have to tell people that so that we can sucker them into watching it. Right. But right. it is, uh, it is, uh, it's, yeah, I hear, that's my defense of you, but really you messed up. You messed up. I uh, Insulted them. You insulted them a, a little, little bit. bit. A little bit. You got a little on the line yourself. So before I before I start, you know, self oh oh oh. By the stuff. way, yeah. You know, I was you know I was telling you we did we were doing this. There was an <laughs> a episode recently we did one of our few recent mailbags. I think it was the last mailbag we did. And we talked about um, impressions that we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just going off on me and my buddy Wes doing Goodfellas uh, impressions. But then I realized we also we would also do the Untouchables impression, which is also uh, which is also uh, Al, uh, De Niro, but right. as Al. I want, I want him dead. I want his, his family, family dead. dead. I want his house burning to the ground. Oh. That whole thing. And then, uh, and then uh, Sean Connery, um, when he's like, uh, um, what does Sean Connery says? Uh, how, he Chicago hits a guy way. in the face. With the, he hits a guy in the face with uh, with the butt of his gun. And then he looks around and he goes, "How do you think he feels now? Better <laughs> or worse?" <laughs> I just, I my, my favorite Sean Connery thing to to uh, impersonate. Uh, from that movie is where he's like lying bleeding on the ground. He's like, what are you prepared to do? <laughs> that? 
Right? Your favorite line is to make fun of Sean Connery's death scene. I mean, I mean, Shame. it's it's a little ridiculous, and I love that movie. Anyway, we're we're okay. five minutes in. We haven't even touched no the question, so let's get started. Let's, let, let's bag it. Um, our uh, our first question from I believe a first time uh, contributor Morgan. I've got a question. I think you all should tackle in an upcoming podcast, Morgan. Done. Your wishes are command, Morgan. <laughs> uh, don't go that far. We don't know what he's got at his sleeve. I know I, it'll be I especially know. close I to know Phil's Morgan. heart. Best Corey's movie. Mm. Or you could rank them in order greatest to worst if you dare. First off, I don't think we dare that specifically right now. But to understand no. what he's talking about, viewers who don't who aren't aware, uh, in the 80s there were two teen actors that became teen idols and very successful, very bankable movie stars, Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. They start in movies separately, they start movies together, uh, and most recently, before Corey Haim's extraordinarily unfortunate and untimely demise, uh, they, they starred in a reality show called The Two Corys. They both, I mean, they're, they're sort of the cautionary tale for, for yep. child actors in the 80s, or at least, one, at least two of them, uh, two of the cautionary tales. Uh, they both got into drugs, and, and Feldman seems like he's gotten his life back together a little bit, which is good to see. Uh, sure. That's enough preamble. Um... You want to take us away? There's only two real legitimate options for best Corey's movie, and I'm I'm looking at the list right now. I've seen one, two, three, four. I've seen four or five. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> the only two legitimate options are Lost Boys and License to Drive. Hmm. Um, and they're very different movies, so you can love them just the same. The third movie that is my 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 third favorite is I told you about Dream a Little Dream, which yes. is a Heyman Feldman uh, body switching thing. They don't switch bodies. F uh, uh, Feldman switches bodies with Jason Robards. Awesome. And I and uh, I believe he woos Piper Laurie, or, or I I don't I, I, can't I don't watch remember that movie. the plot. And you need to watch the movie because it's got a girl in it who wasn't ever in anything after that. Um, I think she was the same girl. I have to look at this, and I'm going to look it up. I'm pretty sure she was the same girl from Journey of uh, Journey, the Journey of Natty Gan. <gasps> oh, that is fantastic! I, I want, did everyone just see what I did to Andy? Um, it 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 was she was in like three movies in the '80s and then disappeared. Anyways, but I had a big thing about that movie, even though if I I remember watching it and being disappointed every time I watched it and then watching it again. Um, there's only two legitimate options, Lost Boys and License to Drive. Sure, and sure. It, it's really tough for me. I, okay. I'm going to go with... <clears throat> Five Lost, seconds. Boys is the, Lost Boys is the only Joel Schumacher movie that I don't hate. No, that's not true. I also don't hate Falling Down. But Lost Boys has the distinction of being one of the few movies that Joel Schumacher has made that doesn't make me want him to go away forever, okay. um, is the nice okay. way to say that. Uh, but License to Drive, it's License to Drive. Okay. It's License to Drive. So I can ah! I have ah! never seen, I have never seen License to Drive. I should. I will someday. Uh, the answer, the answer I, so, I mean, The Lost Boys, I, I legitimately like. I own it. It's, it's a solid... Back when vampires were allowed to be scary, vampire movie that also has some awesome like cheesy '80s music that's just great. Um, I think I'm changing my answer. Continue. Zip it. Uh, the uh, the other thing. So so, but that's the only Corey's movie that I can really speak intelligently about. And so what I'll do is I'll tell you my favorite individual Corey movie for each one. For um, for Feldman. Um, for Feldman, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's got to be the Goonies. It just has oh, to be. okay. I thought you were gonna say Stand by Me, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love Stand by Me, but it's got to be the Goonies. Yeah. And for yeah. Lucas, for 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 Corey Haim, it's got to be Lucas, um, which is a is a it's a it's a coming of age movie where yeah. he uh, Charlie Sheen is in it before he went yeah. insane. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it is it, Winona Williams. Ryder's in it. Carrie Green, who yep. is in uh, who is in the Goonies, it is. Yep. Truly one of the sweetest movies I've ever seen. Yep. Um, I forget how it ends, but I assume it ends sadly. Uh, it, I will say, no. It ends with the single, and I, I, I'm aware of the bold statement I am making. It ends with the single greatest slow clap in cinematic history. Well, yeah, yeah, and then we call it the Lucas Clap. That's yes. why we call it the Lucas Clap. Yes. It's um, actually called the Lucas Clap. So, is that like the Wilhelm scream? 
Okay, uh, let's... Uh, <laughs> while you Lucas clap, uh, let, that's our Lucas clap into the next question. Um, no, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to say something here. Um, okay. Don't I get to say... I, I want to say, the, the I agree with you about the Feldman movies, except that you also need to mention the Burbs. Because uh, Feldman is fantastic in the Burbs as uh, as uh, uh, Tom Hanks's one of Tom Hanks's unwitting sidekicks, which the Burbs is a sneaky, phenomenal movie. Um, but I think I think really License to Drive is so funny and has a dream. Go- it, it is everything teenagers. I mean, it's really dated now. But I bet if a teenager watched it right now, even though it was really dated, they would be like, "This is exactly what I want to happen when I get my license." Like it is. Sure. It is. You you get a license and you get the girl. It makes it's got the single best representation of the DMV and of driving tests I've ever seen in my entire life, including a line from a DMV agent that I can never quote because it actually two different lines from the DMV. Oh no, one that I can't quote, but another one um, where she said basically the lady says, uh, "Don't get near me, people. I'm a ticking time bomb." But there's another. There's so many lines in it. Um, I mm, it's it introduced me to Frank Sinatra. Awesome. It has it has Carol Kane. It has um, I don't know. Awesome. I want and may I want. To, I think those are the two clearly good movies. And License to Drive is definitely my favorite. And okay. Morgan, uh, and Morgan, you can be Feldman and I can be Hame. I mean that. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. Can we move on? Yeah. All righty. Uh, from new contributor Daniel. How's it going, Daniel? Uh, hi, Daniel. Uh, a movie you love. That you gr- you regret showing a spouse or partner, maybe they hated it, or maybe they just didn't get your love for it, but you regret showing it to them. Um. Okay. So you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, I want you to go first. So I was uh, dating this girl in college, and uh, I wanted to watch uh, Elizabeth with her because it's a phenomenal movie. We went back to my dad's house, and my dad loved all these English stuff, and he like he didn't have a lot of good movies, but he had Elizabeth, and Kate Blanchett as Queen Elizabeth is so phenomenal, and I was mm. like, you're gonna love this movie. It's amazing. Like, Kate Blanchett's great, strong female character, makes me look like a feminist, maybe she'll like me more, you know, the whole drill. So we start, <laughs> start to watch the movie, and in the first, like, 30 seconds of the movie, these women are being burned at the stake in the movie, and my and my 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 girlfriend starts to sob uncontrollably, <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about too. Sob uncontrollably, sure. And with 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 like the sensitivity of a of a of a twenty year old uh, boy named Phil goes, "What's the problem? It's not real." Like. It, but she, we didn't get to finish the movie that I was like so excited to show her, and she was wrecked for the rest of the night. I don't know. Um, this this would be a pattern with me and girls showing them the wrong movies. And I thought that I was my 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 wife. Now I, I got to tell you, I I'm very good at not taking her to things that she won't. I'm very careful with that, and I don't try to show her things. But we are watching the AFI Top 100, and so we're watching. She's in on it, and so there's movies yeah. that she's watching that. Like she, she was just like she literally was just like slamming her head against the television, like <laughs> Blade Runner, be over, Blade Runner, be over. <laughs> um, and uh, but but the movie that really disappointed me was, and I hadn't remembered, I'd seen it in college, but I had forgotten was I was like I, I don't remember caring about French Connection, and we rewatched French Connection, and I was she never seen it, and I hadn't seen it in ten years. I like loved it. Yeah, I was like. How did I not remember loving that so much? What 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 just happened? And she was just like, "Ugh, God, thank God that's over." And it like it like it hurt, you know? Right. Like I was like, "No, but Gene Hackman is Popeye Doyle with the hat and the Poughkeepsie and the." She goes, "That's not even an ending. I don't even care." You know? She goes, "You know what? Never mind. I don't even care how it ends. I'm just glad it's over. I don't even care how it ends." And there's like this piano jazz soundtrack, and she's like, "I can't." It hurts my ears. It's like it's like just like somebody slamming their hands down. Like my daughter started getting on the piano and she goes, That's what that soundtrack was like. <laughs> our our one year old on the piano is what the soundtrack sounds like. Wow. So it, it was not that was sad for me. That was hard. That is that's sad. But that's really sad I, now, like I am very careful about that. I just very, I just don't even try. Awesome. You. Um so I I, I am sure it has happened where I was like Yay! I love this movie, and and the person I was watching it with was like, "That's just terrible." But I can't I can't recall it. But I but I do have, and this is also an ex girlfriend of mine. Um, 
As opposed I, to an ex-girlfriend of mine. Yes. Uh, I, I showed her, I showed, I, as Phil and as, as maybe most of you know, I love romantic comedies. Um, I just love them. I, I, I don't necessarily think they're amazing movies, but I think they're very enjoyable. And I mean, sure. they should be like the great, a great movie to watch with your significant other, right? So it's a given. And, and by the way, Andy, you're the man. She's supposed to like them, and you're supposed to be the one who's like, "Honey, I'll watch that with you." Right. Like I remember, like right. I've been tra seen trailers for movies that I would never want to see, and and my or I'll be like, I, I'm like, I guess I could palette that crappy movie, and I'll look over my wife, and I'll be like, I'll go to that with you if you want, and she's like, "You will," <laughs> and it's like gift. Yeah, I haven't once cashed in on that. I've, it's always been like, I know because okay. you like them as much as she does. Yeah. So so what movie was it? So. I watch my favorite movie of all time at many points in my life, uh, and maybe now I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Is When Harry Met Sally. I love yeah. it because it's a because it's a it's a romantic comedy that is actually real and it feels real and it feels like actual people going through real problems, but also being hilarious. Yes. Um, however, and 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 it's 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 been it's been a long road to this realization for me. I don't agree with the central premise of the movie. And that is, I mean, I, the central argument that they have at the beginning is men and women can't be friends, right? And the movie, they spend the movie just being friends, right? But then the movie mm -hmm. says, no, she was right all along because they can't just be friends. They are in love. Wait, and no, he's wrong. He he was right all along because he's the one oh, who sorry, says sorry. men yes, and women yes, can't be friends. Yes, she's, yes, okay. yes. she's like, they can't be friends. He's like, no, you're wrong. And and it makes him right. And that kind of drives me crazy because I don't I don't believe that. I will do a whole I will do a whole podcast with you on that conversation because I think that is a separate thing that I disagree with you on, but it'll take too long today. So it's already continue. too long. So you know. No. But uh, <laughs> but um I disagree. And it's really important to me. Like, like, like I, I really, I, I cultivate relationships of all kinds and I don't really care about the genitalia of the person that I have the relationship with. And that's not what you told me when we became friends, but continue. hi -oh, come on. It's a joke. Oh my God. Right. We're working blue here, people. Oh all right. My, don't so work what, blue. When, don't when work Sally, blue. You're better than that, Phil. What, um, I apologize for that. What happened when, with, with when Harry met Sally with this girl? Uh, she basically she looked over at me at the end of the at the end of the movie. So first was, of all, first of all, you guys were together. She's an adult. You guys had she's she's an adult who's been an adult for a while and had never seen when Harry met Sally, or it had been years. One of one of the two, or it had been years. And okay, so she's suspect as it is. Continue. Nice. So so she was like so so this is actually an argument that we had had, you know, because I have a lot of female friends who, right. unless they're drugging me, I'm not sexually involved with any of them. Um, I I was like, I have a lot of female friends. She's like, no, you don't. And I was like, and again, just like you were saying, like that, like the romantic comedy, like the roles were reversed. And I was like, right. I was like, oh, good. Here's another here's an, here's another instance where I'm not the man in right. in my life. Fantastic. Right. Well, uh, and, and she was like, see, your favorite movie agrees with me. And I was like, oh, no. So then about a week later, then about a week later, we watch another romantic comedy that I enjoy, although it's nowhere near as good as When Harry Met Sally, but it's a good recent entry into the genre, uh, Keeping the Faith, with okay. Jenna Elfman, okay. Edward Norton, and Ben, and, uh, yep. uh, ben uh, Stiller. Stiller. Um, and and she, we get to the end of that movie, and she was like, spoilers, Jenna Elfman ends up with Ben Stiller, who is a rabbi, and she converts. Uh. And she was like, you showed me this because she converts. And I was like, oh my God, this is the, like, like, this is it. Am I dead? Am I dead? This, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me ever. Um, <laughs> the important thing to remember about both my answer to this question and Phil's answer to this question, we have ruined our relationships with women through our love of movies. What I like, it's, I like the idea that you like took her to see Lord of the Rings, and she was like, "What? What? You think I'm an elf? You think I'm what? You think I'm a troll? What is this?" 
You want to throw me? Oh, I get it. You want to throw me in a big mountain that that's filled with lava so that right. I, I die. I get it. I right. see how it is. You're gonna, I see you're how gonna it feed is. me. You need to, you don't want to give me a ring. You want to destroy the ring forever. Oh, is this your way of telling me we're never getting married? Right. I this would, is, you you, you, you want to feed me ever... to a giant spider? Uh, yes. <laughs> um. Well, don't ever see Forrest Gump with her. Don't ever see Forrest Gump with her. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this trip to Andy's psychoses and uh, pathos is uh, is brought to you by the letter J and the number three. Okay, last question for the day from Gosh, from uh, from uh, one of our favorite contributors, Keith. Keith is back with a a corker of a question. What up, K Money? Pick a part of or all of a movie song or score. To be your permanent intro right. music rules, the song score has to have originated from or be closely associated with the movie, and the music would play every time you walk into any room. It's a blessing and a curse. I guess I phrase this more like a demand. Oh, well. First off, Keith, I'm not sure I like your tone. You're not the boss of us, Keith. You're not, You're not the not boss, the of, boss us. of us. Having said that, wife. now we're going to answer your I question. I have a wife and a child. They're the boss of me. <laughs> I'm partners in this venture with Phil. He's the boss of me. It's true. Um, it's true. Which technically means that my two-year-old daughter is the boss of both of us. Not a good situation. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, so so a, a bit of a caveat. Um, I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to be able to modify the volume just for this reason. I mean, if it's three in the morning, I'm going to the bathroom. I don't want to wake up. You know, you don't want to wake up your wife. I don't want to wake up my roommates. Right. So it's like in Jewish households, like there's a mezuzah on every door frame, except right. For the when you walk into the door, not every single door frame. I'm with you on that completely, completely. Uh, yeah, Otherwise, you'd never go to the bathroom. There you go. Like, you, you, okay. Um, I want to say something about this question. Um, every Christian dreads the question. Um, what's your favorite book, or who's the one? Who historical figure you want to meet because it's not fair because if we don't say the bible or jesus people are like i knew it <laughs> and it's not non-religious people it's other religious people who are like you know if you were a better christian you'd have said jesus and it's like look i'm gonna see jesus i promise later on i'm gonna see jesus like when i die i'd like to meet johnny cash you know what i mean like come on i i don't know what's gonna happen with johnny cash but i know that jesus and i are gonna hook up what is point. gonna happen Right, I'd like to line right. up something I'd like to else. hang out with Johnny Cash in the now, okay? Right. And books, too. Like, like, you can't say the Bible. It's not fair. Like, it's just not your favorite book. It's not a book. It's totally something different. Um, you know, so you have to – so just put those aside for a second, Cheater. I think the answer – the same way here, like, neither of us can say the imp – Imperial March from Star Wars. It's the obvious answer because it really is the ultimate answer. Like dun 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 dun. dun no, dun, I disagree. Dun, no, I know the, that you. It's the, feel free it's to the, use that. Okay, no, no, I'm not going to because my point is it would be a cop out. You know that I'm a fan of cop out answers, and it wasn't my answer anyway. So you know. No, but your answer was because like Phil, that's Darth Vader's song, and I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like him walking down the. The walk, the like the walkway with to, to with, you know, ugh. I, okay. I, I I got you. I got you. It's okay, cool. so then what 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 is it? What is it? Yours? What's yours? So Des, I was just saying. To me, Imperial March is just unquestionably the obvious one, and I'm not going to choose it. So continue. Okay. Um, it, this was really first off. It was a lot of fun for me. I, I thought about. I didn't want to choose a song just because I don't want words playing every time I come in and out of a words being sung every time I come out in and out of a room. Um, uh, but, but, and, and this is, I know that this is why, why Keith did it, that what threw me was that we keep it, like it, it happens every time you walk in and out of, or into a room. Um, so, so it has to be something that is sort of for all occasions. Right. Um, I thought about, I thought about the, the main theme to the third man, which is one of my favorite themes of all time. I thought about the theme to Jaws. <laughs> I thought about the theme sure. to Lord of the Rings. The idea, um, what I like about Jaws is it would warn people when you were coming, like, yes. like more so. Like, you'd be, like, pulling over, turning in, onto your street, and it'd be like, da na da na Yeah, it's true. It's true. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I, I thought about, uh, I, I, th I thought about just so much. I thought about Rushmore, 
Like like all of the stuff that Mark Mothersbaugh does. I mean, oh man, the the little oh, it's so good. It's legit. It's legit. Um, but I'm going with the Magnificent Seven theme. A l- I, I found a lot. I found a lot of the theme songs or the themes that I was that I was deciding between were old westerns. I think they're just they're just yep. so many awesome western yeah. Uh, themes. Yeah. yeah. And and which one's um, the Magnificent Seven again? One because I know it, but which okay, one is it? It, it starts. Uh, apologies for me humming something. Yeah, 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 orchestral. You're... But it's like da da. Da 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 da. da. It, it's it is a uh, I I've just screwed it up and and that's going to bug me. So, so I will I will um I'll come back to that in a minute. But um it has mm-hmm. two different themes. It's like the Indiana Jones theme. Like there's the part that starts it out and everybody knows it. And it is and the magnificent theme the magnificent seven theme is so rousing and mm-hmm. exciting that. Honestly, I sometimes have a problem with procrastination, and this would cure that. Because it's like, I have a lot of energy now, do da. Except that's not the theme. But you get my point. And yep. also, there's like, there's like, uh, da 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 da. That's like the B theme to it, and it's so beautiful and and pleasant, and it's not quite placid. It still sort of moves, and it has momentum, but. That's that's I want to be rousing. I want I I want to be rousing, and I want people to be roused when I enter a yep. room. So that's yep. that's my answer. Which leads to my answer. Which well, I have two answers. My first answer would be the Ride of the Valkyries. Nice uh, <laughs> from the apoc from Apocalypse Now. Yes, with Robert Duvall raining terror down on the uh, the Viet Cong. Like that's uh, like dun 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 dun. Like me walking in like every single time. Yeah, um, people probably you'd get tired of that. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> You're right. um, Come on. But I think my cho- but I think because it's so loud and bombastic, I think my actual choice is going to be Pusher Man, which is from the movie Superfly, and it's done by Curtis Mayfield. And it is one of the coolest 70s wonka chicka wonka chicka wonka chicka like sounding like it's not shaft at all, but it's 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 got that similar sound, but it's a different one. And everyone should look Pusher Man by Curtis Mayfield. It is a beautiful, fantastic and it's and it's so cool. That it's even used on um, uh, in in Cable Guy during the scene where uh, Jim Carrey Jim Carrey is pretending to be a bathroom uh, a bathroom attendant and he beats up this girl's uh, date that she's on with. Like it's a long story, but the whole song is choreographed to that song, or the whole scene is choreographed to that song. But Curtis Mayfield, coolest, one of the best musicians ever, one of my favorite singers, one of my favorite songwriters ever, and he wrote this awesome score to the 70s black exploitation movie Superfly and Pusher Man is just like me walking in it would make me feel cool awesome. cuz i need help i need help with that sure sure so 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 for people who don't know Pusher Man to think and i'm not i'm not equating it but like like kind of the feeling you get if you were John Shaft um like, yeah except, except yeah except badder cuz it's awesome. about a drug dealer cuz it's about a drug dealer also i'd like to point something out that i just reckon i just remembered please I'm a priest. Yeah. So so theme music plays every time I walk in the door of a church. Literally, there's a processional, and I walk in when there's music playing. It's not the same song every time. It is not your theme. No, you're well played. (laughs) Well played. It is certainly not my theme music. Uh, It is definitely not for me. It's for someone else. Mm, But mm -hmm. the idea of walking into music actually happens on a weekly basis. That's all I have to say by that. I am going at some point in your career. I'm going to mug you, tie you up, put you in a in a closet, and walk in in your stead just to have that happen to me, because that's how jealous I am. Okay, but just remember, you're right, and it's very important to say it ain't for me. So, whereas yeah, the theme sure. music would be the theme song music would be totally for me. Yeah, theme music, Keith. Well done. Well Keith, done. Awesome. Well done, buddy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I have the Magnificent Seven theme in my head. I'm not going to hum it. <laughs> just make people listen to it. Just do it. Look at, like, search it on YouTube. There are, it's, it, like, it, it's, oh, it's, it is. It, you know what I should do? It will do you know what I should do? your body. It will fill your heart with joy. Do you know what I should do? What's that? I should see the Magnificent Seven someday. Oh, promise me we can watch that together. I mean, Promise okay. Me we can watch that together. Can we watch Seven Samurai first? Yes. Okay. If we can watch Seven Samurai first, I'll watch Magnificent Seven for you. Are you not excited to see Magnificent Seven? 
It's in, it's in, all I'll say is this, it's in the short conversation for best remake of all time. I've, I've heard nothing but stellar things about it. Yes. So I, I should see it. Agreed. Okay. All right. Well. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy what, Friday. Have a, great have a weekend. fantastic weekend. Listen, don't do anything stupid, all right? Uh, but, and if you do, whatever. That's cool, I guess. Come back on Monday. Just don't do anything that will take you away from us so that you're not our viewer on Monday. Right. Don't go and die on us because we want you to be watching our podcast. Right? Because in the end, it's really all about us. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you have people who love you, blah, blah, blah. You know, right. affairs to put in order, you, you responsibilities. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. Second breakfast, podcast, all about that. Uh, uh, Morgan, Daniel, Keith, thank you. <laughs> These were great. These Domo were great. Argato, all of you. <laughs> and Mr. Roboto as well. Um, have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you again on Monday for 5-Minute Monday. I'm Andy Roth. That's Phil Duvall. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Bye.